guys and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody. In today's video, we're going to go over how to turn the basic Luna body, so just this little base, and how I turn one of those into this super cute, adorable little bunny. It's a super easy pattern, super easy tutorial. I'm not going to be going over how I make the head, the body, or the arms. I have a tutorial for that, which I will link down below. It is my base Luna body, where I go over how to make the body, and the head is my basic amigurumi ball. But in this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to make the ears and how to do the embroidery for the nose. So I'm kind of coming into this video that you've already made the body, that you know how to work in the round, that you know how to single crochet, how to chain, how to do increasing and decreasing, how to stuff an amigurumi. This is an intermediate uh, video so I kind of go with off the basic knowledge that you know how to do all those already and I'm going to show you ba the basic pattern for this ear and how I embroider the nose it's super easy I'm not somebody who's known for embroidery so I do a very basic embroidery uh, you could very easily use some fabric paint if you want to do that for the nose instead um, that is something that I've n I've been known to do that I also will be showing you how I add blush to the insides of the ears and to the face on the cream bunny so you can get an idea of what you do for that a lot of people will use things like puffy paint and put it on a brush and kind of just lightly tap it on but I prefer using legit blush so I use Dollar Tree blush for that. I don't waste anything like high end on that. Works just fine. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn. You will also need some stuffing. Everything that you would need for your basic body is the stuff that you're going to need. I'm also going to be using a darning needle in this project, as well as my beautiful Furls Crochet Hook. I am an affiliate with Furls Crochet, but I only became an affiliate after I bought their original hooks and I fell in love with them. I bought their quarantine kit back in the day and it was amazing. This is a size D or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I love them. Uh, if you missed our last tutorial, we made these cute little shorts which can go on our bunny. So, you know, go back in time and try to find that. If you have not made those shorts, they are super adorable. I also have a t-shirt that you can make for this um, size body as well. I'm pretty excited about it. That is pretty much all you're gonna need. So let's get started. Oh, and before I forget, um, I do have a printable PDF for this that you can download for free for the first week. So definitely do the whole subscribing and liking and hitting the bell so that you can be notified when we post new patterns and new videos because every time I post one of these tutorials for all of my patterns, I come out with a nice printable PDF on Ravelry and on Love Knitting uh, where you can go on at least Ravelry. I've not been able to figure out how to do coupon codes on Love Knitting, but on Ravelry you can use for the first week the coupon code linked down below to get the pattern for free. So if you're interested in that, click down below, get the pattern. A lot of people redeem those and I love it. I love that people were able to get that. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that and do the whole liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell thing. Let's get to the tutorial. All right, so I've already created one of our ears. This is going to go along the top of the head. I'm just gonna sew it on like I did my arms for my Luna body, but I'm gonna leave that over here and keep that there. We're gonna pull out our yarn. I'm using, I believe this is Vanna's Choice actually for the gray. I used some Heartland line brand, all worsted weight yarns. So I'm going to create a magic ring like I do for all of my other uh, amigurumi. I'm gonna create, actually I'm gonna make it a little bit no, that's a good long tail. I'm gonna make a magic ring with a nice, decently long tail, nice good six inch one, because I use that for my stitch marker. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. I'm gonna put it on my hook, and I'm going to chain two and do my magic ring that I always do for um, all of my amigurumi. I just chain two and start working into the very first chain that I created. This is no different than I did for the rest of my Luna bodies. And I'm going to, this is a little bit different, place five single crochet inside of this first chain instead of the six that I would usually do for my amigurumi. I think that this looks cute and adorable. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, all inside the same little piece there, four, and five. So we have that big old hole there. We're gonna take that and pull it so that that pulls tight. And next, we are now on round two. I'm hopefully gonna be posting little pop-up captions here of the pattern like I always do. I try to anyway, I think it makes it easier and people can follow along better that way. I'm going to increase each of those stitches. So I'm gonna go from five stitches 
to 10. So this is a very similar um, idea as to what I do for my increasing on my heads, but I'm not gonna go as big. But And I'm gonna go and increase in each one of these. So I'm gonna go from five to 10. Usually you'd go from six to 12, but I'm using one less stitch. So you end up with one less repetition overall. So we're gonna go inside there and an increase is when you place two stitches within your single stitch from the previous round. I get a lot of questions about that. I'm gonna pull my tail a little bit tighter there. That way I don't end up with that big old loop there. And we're gonna go inside our first stitch again, start working in the round. And I'm going to put two stitches in each one of these loops here. That is when you're increasing, you basically go in each stitch and you add two stitches to each stitch from the previous round. That is an increase. I get a lot of questions about that. <laughs> so, and uh, I love getting questions in the comments. So keep them coming. I love answering people and I love talking to people down in the comments. I think we're on our second to last increase. And then this is our last increase. So now we should have 10 stitches, 10 single crochet on our piece here. So I'm gonna count the little Vs. That counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We now have 10 stitches and we're going to now go from 10 stitches to 15. And the way that we do that, stop bouncing camera. There we go. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one increase single crochet one increase all the way around we're going to basically do that five times so the first one we're going to just do a single stitch and then the next one we're going to go into and do a double it's essentially we're going to increase and i always go through the front loop only i get that question a lot too i find that going through the front loop only or FLO looks a lot more bubbly and I like how that looks. So with my amigurumi, when I'm not doing anything funky or weird, I just go around and go through the front loop only. See how there's two loops there? Going through the front loop only is what I like to do. I also hold my yarn from left to right and I go that way when most people will pick up like so. I think this looks different and I like how my stitches look better that way. I learned wrong, but I liked how it looked in the end product. So that's kind of how that goes. And I'm getting, I'm losing track of my, where I am. I chat a lot and you know, there's that. Oh, also there will be, as just like any other, I lost my stitch there. There we go. He decided to get all puffy and weird. So where am I? I increased there, so I did a single. Now I'm going to a double. Double. How many stitches do I have? I should have 15 towards the end of this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I need to do one more increase. So 1. And increase. So here, I'm back at the beginning. And what I like to do here is I'm going to take my tail... I'm gonna pull this out just so I don't lose my stitch or anything like that. I'm going to put my hook inside of this little hole right here from where my increase was. It kind of makes the stitch really big. I'm going to take my tail and I'm gonna kind of pull it through just like I do with all of my other uh, amigurumi and I'm going to just have that be my marker so I can see where I go each time. So that was round one, two, and we just finished off three. So from three to row 12, as you can see here, that was three, that's what we finished off. We're going to just single crochet around and I'll show you what I do to the very bottom once we do that, but you're literally just gonna go around and around and around and around for that three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ten rows. Ten rows? Ten rounds. So I can do math. <laughs> I'm better when I'm like writing it than I am when I'm talking about it. Sorry about that. So we're going to just go around and around and around for those 10 rounds and we'll finish off and I'll show you how I do the little ends and how I sew it onto the head. So that's basically all there is to this cute little bunny ear. You get up to 15 stitches and then you just go around and around and around. I'll be right back as soon as I am done with those 10 rounds and yeah, be right back. All right, so we've gone around for our 10 rounds and I am all done on here. So we're going to actually just slip stitch through our first stitch of what our next round would be. I'm gonna slip stitch through like so, and then I'm going to cut my tail. I'm gonna give myself a pretty long tail, 
I'm gonna give myself like a 12 inch long tail because I can always make, I can always trim the tail shorter if I need it to be, but I can never make it as long as I need it to be if I cut it too short. So that's what I do. So I'm gonna take my tail and I'm just gonna pull it through like so, yoink. And then what I like to do anytime I have like an edge like this is I like to pull it underneath the stitch like so it makes it nice and smooth and i kind of tug on it a little bit and from here i'm gonna move that tail out of the way i'm not gonna need my crochet hook for a minute i'm gonna take my darning needle and i'm gonna show you how i do the little sewing and how i bend it so that it looks like so so what i do is i'm gonna take my darning needle i'm gonna put my yarn through it i may have made this tail a little too long but it'll work out and then i literally just bend my little work in half I make sure that all of my stitches are kind of laying flat like so there we go and then I'm gonna take my needle and I just kind of go back and forth through the stitches so I'm gonna go through this part right here because I already have it across from there and then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm kind of gonna go through all the stitches across so I try to go through stitches all the way across that are like lining up I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go into the next ones like so make sure that they're all kind of lining up like so and pull that through and now since I've made it back to the other side I'm gonna start going through those centers again and try to get back to the center over here and pull that through do the same thing on the last one right here pull that through that way I only have to then take my needle and kind of go through the fronts of the stitches to kind of tighten it up a little bit right there I like to bring those together so I'm gonna pull that like that I'm gonna go through again but I only go through the first like the last two rows like here so that I can get that to pull in a little bit so that it won't just be randomly attached. I like to kind of bring it all in so that it would, it, I think it looks a bit more natural that way. So then I go back to the beginning where I go down and I go back down to the base and that way I can just easily sew this. I go back to where my first stitch would be like so and then I just sew it along the last increase round of my Luna head. So I can tell where my increase was. I had an increase right there. And so I like to take my ear and sometimes, oftentimes, I'll take like a stitch marker and I'll stab it through my stitches and I kind of just let them lay there and then I sew it like that. I like to keep my ear attached to the head while I sew this. That way it's not like something I have to think about. I'm going to go from right above that there we go, where my last increase was, and I'm gonna start attaching it, like so. So I go through the work, and I go from top down below, and I just do the entire thing all the way around. I'm gonna finish attaching this, uh, like so, and then I'm gonna show you how I do the blush and the embroidery on the cream bunny. I find that that, as I hit my camera, <laughs> I find that that, no, don't stick. There you go, looks a bit better when I do the embroidery and the cute little blush. So I'll show you how I do that in just a second. So I'm not sure why, but I completely blanked on the tiny tail, probably because it is such a tiny little feature. But um, the tail is actually super easy to do as well. I'm going to be taking my worsted weight yarn. I already did the tail for my cream bunny. So I'm going to have him just hang out over here. And oh, nope, stay there. We're going to work on the one for the gray bunny because that's what we've been using this entire time. It has uh, kind of a slightly larger yarn I want to say it's slightly thicker than the Heartland so I'm going to go with the Vanish Choice over here I'm going to make a ring and for the first round uh one and two for the first two rounds the tail is going to be the exact same as the ear so we're essentially going to make a ring so we're going to do our chain two make it into a magical ring and I'm going to place five single crochet inside that ring so one two, three, four, and five. 
So I have this big hole, I close it, and I like to work with my tail through the backs of the loops for the next five stitches just because usually I just let the tail drop inside of whatever I'm working with, but because this is such a tall, small thing, I just wanna hide it better. So I'm gonna go in and make it so that I increase every single one of these stitches, but with the tail as if it is a part of my work, like I do for a lot of my um, projects. So I'm gonna keep my tail between the stitch and my single crocheting. I can basically go underneath, pick up my stitch like so, and then I put my tail kind of in the front. I let it just kind of sit there. So this is my second increase. Going to go into my third stitch with my tail in front. Third increase, and I only have five increases, so we're actually pretty close. It's super quick and easy to crochet this up. Now oh, I lost a stitch there apparently. Not, not a stitch, but I lost a piece of my yarn. It'll be fine, I can crochet with it on the inside and it will be fine. That's my fourth increase. Still keeping, this is really hard because there's like a lot of till, like a lot of heathering to this specific skein. So this is my last increase, there we go. I'm going to keep my tail in the front and I'm going to just kind of pull on my tail just a little bit, just to kind of tug it a little bit snugger, put my tail on the front. That will be what I use as my marker from here on out. And now on the third row, I'm going to just single crochet across all 10 of these stitches. So one, making sure my work is flipped the right way. Two, three, this is all I was talking about how I kind of missed a piece of that uh, yarn. I'm gonna go through the front and kind of work it so that it's in the back. Six, seven, nope, split that one in half. Seven, there we go. Eight, nine. Oh no, that's seven. And that's 10, there we go. Oops, I miscounted. And 10. So now, I have my tail. I'm gonna take that tail and kind of move it over. I like to do that as a stitch marker um, method. That's what I do. So I'm gonna bring that to the back, actually. I'm gonna go through the center of my last stitch that I just made, and I'm going to put my tail through that. And now we're going to want to kind of close this up so that it will um, just go in on itself, essentially. So the way that I do that is I'm going to just decrease every single stitch until I get to the last decrease and then I'll show you what I do there. So this is one, go through the next two stitches together, two, go through the next two stitches, three, go through the next two stitches, and four. So I still have one more decrease to do before I get to the end of this row, but I find it really, 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 really hard to, I don't know why I needed that many reallys, but it's really hard to make the um, stuffing be able to go in because this is such a small little piece. I'm going to take my little stitch marker, the little blunted end here. I find that a little tiny wood spool makes it easier. I'm gonna put a little ball of stuffing and I'm just gonna kind of squish that in as firmly as I can. Make sure that all the stuffing is in. That's about as much as I would like it. I'm actually gonna take my tail because I know where I am, I'm gonna cut it. So that's why it's such a small little piece there. That's why I work it into those stitches, otherwise it could unravel. So I'm going to take my last two stitches, this one and this one, and I'm going to skip the next stitch and go into the last one with a slip stitch. I'm gonna pull my tail a little bit so that it's a bit more uh, firm, and I'm just gonna slip stitch that right there and that's how I make the tail. It's super duper easy. I'm gonna make a nice long tail for sewing. I'm gonna pull that through like so and then I'm gonna take it and pull it underneath the stitch so that it looks a bit more neat. That way it looks very very nice. I'm just going to sew this onto the back and then I will go right onto the embroidery. Be right back. Okay, so I finished with the ears. I just added them on real quick. And what I'm gonna show next is how I do the nose. So for the embroidery on the nose, this is a pretty quick one. 
I like to do a double layer of pink yarn. I don't use embroidery floss to do the nose. You could use embroidery floss, but I prefer to just use some yarn. It's what I have on hand, so I'm gonna do that. What I like to do is I take about 24 inches of yarn, so I have pink right here. I'm gonna do two different colors, and I double up those. Uh, I kind of double it over on itself, like so. So it's kind of just like that, and the ends meet. I hope that makes sense, because I can't show the entire thing really on camera. All right, so I'm gonna let that kind of hang out over there and I'm going to essentially figure out where I want the nose. I like to have it about two stitches apart from here and from here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it in from the side and then put the, wherever I want the nose to show up, where I want it to start on the right side, I'm gonna put my needle in through that side just to give it a little bit more space on the other side, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna pull that all the way through like so until I have only a little bit on the side and then I'm going to put my hook in not my hook my my darning needle in wherever I want it to end and go through just a little bit on the side a little bit more than that actually and I'm gonna pull that through I like to try to make sure that my yarn is going the same way and straight. You could just do that, but I like to go back in where I just came out and I like to go back up, put my yarn up through the darning needle, lightly, lightly until it's back inside, but only just, and then I go through the same hole that I just went into originally. And then I kind of pop that out along the other side like so. And again, I like to make sure that my yarn's all kind of spaced out and going the right way to make sure that it doesn't look weird. So that works fairly well. That one's not the one I want to tighten up. That's what I want to tighten up. There we go. And you can kind of just do that. You could also put some fabric paint right underneath those stitches if you really want them to stay. I like how that looks. I'm just going to, since I went all the way across the body, I'm going to, and I didn't need this much yarn, I'm going to lightly pull on it so that I can go back inside the work if I squish it like so. I'm going to do the same thing with the beginning yarn right there. Like so. Try not to cut the actual amigurumi piece when I do that. So that is how I did the nose. I'm gonna put that yarn in my yarn mill ends. Try not to keep hitting my camera. There we go. And now I'm going to take my black thread, my black, my black yarn, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I match up my ends after threading it through. There we go. And I like to then take my darning needle. I kind of like to go through the top of the head and I'll take my darning needle and I'll go right underneath my nose and pop it back out. So right underneath the nose, that way it goes and looks kind of like it's underneath the nose like so. I go through the center, pull that almost all the way through or as through as I want it to be and I find a good spot to put it in and however long I want it. And then I go sideways. I like to make sure that these are all going straight like so. And there, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty straight. I am happy with how that looks. I'm going to do the exact same thing where I lightly and then because my little yarn's kind of showing through, I'm gonna pull on my fabric a little bit. That way it goes right back in. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side where I lightly pull on it while I cut it. And I do the exact same thing. So that is done. I like how the nose turned out and I'm pretty happy with that. So the only thing left that I have to do is I'm going to take my blush and I have just this little basic brush that I got out of one of my beauty boxes. It's a stippling-esque brush. It's kind of thicker around here and it's circular. I like how this is. It adds blush and a nice... Uh, I like how it adds blush essentially. You could use a lot of different brushes. You could use, again, 
fabric paint if you really want to do something like that but i like adding legit blush so i'm going to show you how i do it on this cute little cream one because i think that it will show up a bit better so my big thing is that you can always add more so go light when you start it might be frustrating because you might end up going and having to make a couple passes but you can always go heavier so i like to lightly tap that and then i kind of tap this on the the screen like so i did it off camera so it wouldn't get all over my desk and not everywhere and what i like to do is i like to add blush by the eyes like here and then i kind of just go in circles and add more as i need it see i added a bunch there so i'm going to try to diffuse that going out a little bit more and i like doing it on the right corner bottom corner of the eye i like how that looks that looks really cute but you can always add more you can never really take away so again i'd rather do smaller motions like that than have it just all of a sudden go really hard on there but because that worked really hard on there i have to go a bit harder on this side now because i want them to match yeah like so so that is how I do my bunny face right there, how I do the eyes just a little bit. That looks really cute. And I also like to take it and I like to swirl and then I like to go right in the deep part of the ear like so and kind of venture it upward a little bit. I think that looks really cute and it adds a bit of a texturing and a bit more of a layering to it. I really like how that looks. It's really subtle, it's soft, and I don't have, like adding too, too much, but I always like doing it on the inner part of the ear, like so. There we go, that's a good amount. And then I diffuse it outward. I like how that looks, it adds a bit more to the ear. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna try not to keep bouncing that everywhere. There we go, I can stop making that annoying noise. I'm sure that's annoying some people. All right. And I like to diffuse it up and outward. So I start with the heavy part right there. I try to get it as inward on the ear as I can when it comes to the bunny. And I diffuse upward. And I try to make it so that they match, so that they're similar in how they look. Because, well, I like things being symmetrical. They look better. And so that is how I do the blush on my bunny. I'm gonna try doing it on the gray one, but it doesn't really like to show up as much on the gray as it does on the cream. Let me see if I can, I might have to go a little bit heavier, but it'll show up. It adds a little bit. So I'm gonna do the gray as well, just real quick. I really like how these turned out. Again, you can find the Luna shorts and the Luna t-shirt on my channel. I have a whole playlist on how to do all the Lunas. That actually shows up really well on the gray. I think I had the same thing happen in another video where I just did not believe that it would show up and I didn't do the gray, but it does. So if you're interested in those kind of playlists, they are linked down below and also all over my channel. I have tons of them. I also have Luna Squishes, which are bigger version of the Luna Babies. I've been trying to do, um, there we go. That's a little crazy. There we go. That looks a little bit better when I fold it. I've been trying to do Luna squishes and Luna mamas and pairs. So if there's a bunny tutorial, I've been trying to make so that there's both a baby and a squish. Same thing with like the sloth video. I'm going to be coming up with a baby sloth uh, as well. I have a squish for the sloth. So I'm trying to do matching for all of them. I'm going to be coming out with a kitty and I'm hopefully before like winter really hits, I'm going to be getting a bear done and a couple other Big ones like a lion done as well. I added a, so much blush to this ear. All right, I'm gonna call that good. It's got a lot of blush on him now. But that's pretty much all there is to this tutorial. It's super easy. And I'm hopefully gonna be doing a lot of these as well. I'm gonna be coming out with a ton of babies and squishes. So if you have requests, have them go down below. I've got a lion in the works. If I have a squish of the tutorial for the, the Luna, then I'm gonna be hopefully coming out with a baby of it. I'm gonna be working on the kitty and the unicorn and the sloth of the baby. Hopefully those will be coming out soon since I already have the bunny as well. If you have anything that you would like to see, let me know, give me comments, do all that stuff stuff i've got tons of social media links down below if you're interested in those um subscribe and definitely hit that bell if you're interested in seeing patterns 
uh, we have a Patreon, we have PayPal, all that kind of stuff, all linked down below if you're interested. But uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> all right, until next time, guys. Bye!